When my ex mother in law restrained my hand, my enraged ex husband grabbed my neck with both hands and began to strangle me. In the midst of my hazy consciousness, I realized that it was the right decision to come alone. This is the kind of ex family that would do such a thing. If Monica had come with me, she wouldn't have been safe either. Really, it was the right decision to come alone. Just when I thought it was hopeless, the front door swung open forcefully. Everyone in the neighborhood, the eldest son of this household, is now pinning down a defenseless woman. He is choking her, and the mother is tightly gripping the vulnerable woman. She's helping her stupid son with his domestic violence. I'm Kate. It has been one year since I married my husband, Stuart. The reason we met was because we both registered with the same marriage consultation agency, and the staff introduced us to each other. To tell the truth, I was quite desperate to get married. I had a considerable fear of the approaching wall of 40. My college friend got married at a young age at 27, and a few years later, my last remaining single friend also got married at 31. I am an only child, so I don't have any siblings, and my extended family connections are also weak. Even my parents, if everything goes according to plan, will depart before me. I was so scared of loneliness, incredibly scared, until I met my husband. I participated in many free events for singles. However, it seems that I have a poor eye for men. As my closest friend Monica, who got married first among our group at the age of 27, constantly rejected the men I chose. As soon as we met, meeting once a week, we promptly started our matchmaking party debriefings. So, what kind of person is this time? He said he works as a clinical psychologist. I don't really care about his occupation. What did you talk about? Well, he was a very serious person. How so? Can you give me an example? He works at a hospital and the patients rely on him more than the doctors. Isn't that amazing? Hmm, anything else? He said he genuinely cares about the patients. He's willing to help as many patients as possible, even if it means volunteering and putting salary second. Rejected! Huh? Why? He's full of self-importance, like he's some kind of hero, but he's not. His need for validation is just too strong. Are you sure about that? Kate, people like him tend to have extreme anger outbursts when things don't go their way. It's better to stay away. Trust me. Well, you know, we can still be friends. I don't think he's even worth being friends with. Yeah, you're right. Even though I said that, I continued the relationship with this man, and I was supposed to go to his birthday celebration. The day before, I slipped on the stairs at work and broke my leg. When I contacted him about it, he unleashed a harsh, verbal attack on me. That's just too much. We had plans for tomorrow, right? Counseling now, isn't that terrible? I'm sorry, but I can't go anywhere with this leg. You should be more careful in life. Tomorrow's my birthday, you know. Oh, thanks to you, it's going to be the worst birthday ever. After that, he abruptly hung up the phone, and communication between us ceased. Aha, uh -huh. Monica was right after all. That's what I thought. I met a man who was a public servant, but could only spare $500 per month after paying for his car loan and supporting his parents. Monica rejected him, but I didn't listen. Unexpectedly, his parents got involved and demanded. If you're dating her, you should give her money too. It was an awakening. And then I met someone at a matchmaking event who was a caregiver. When I told Monica about him, she immediately rejected him. However, as he hinted at marriage, I told Monica that I wanted to marry him, even if she opposed it. Then Monica cried and jeered at me. That guy is completely ignoring your wishes, Kate. He's living with his parents and pressuring you to live with him. If he lives with you, he'll bring his grandmother for the nursing home, right? That means he's fully expecting you to take care of his grandmother. And he thinks it's fine for you to continue working. You'll have to take a one-hour train ride to go to work? 
seriously, wake up already. You can't possibly be happy marrying someone like that. Hey, why don't you try talking to him about fulfilling your wishes? I'm sure he won't budge. Yeah, I'll try saying that I don't want to live together. And when I told him that over the phone, he said he understood. When's your next date? Maybe the day after tomorrow? He's coming here, so we'll meet at the station. Hmm. She probably already knew. In the end, on the day we had promised to meet, he didn't show up at the meeting place, and I couldn't reach him. Still, I waited for three hours, hoping he might show up someday. And in front of me, Monica appeared. You understand now, right? Yeah, sorry. You don't need to apologize. The guy turned out to be a complete jerk. Anyway, since I came here by car, I'll give you a ride home. Let's have something delicious to eat on the way back. I'll get angry if you don't. Thank you. And during our meal, Monica made a suggestion. If you really want to get married, stop going to those free matchmaking events. Go to a proper marriage agency and pay for it. Honestly, I hadn't thought about that. But now that she mentioned it, it's true that for someone like me who lacks judgment, it would be better to know more about the other person's background. It might be a good idea. Yeah, I don't have good judgment after all. Hey, stop being the main character. You always say you lack confidence. Kate, you're cute, very feminine, and classy. Those losers from before were just passing through, so don't dwell on them. Next, next! If you think this guy is no good, it's okay to say, oh, he wasn't right for me. Don't think anything more about it. Kate, if you're worried, I'll go with you to listen to the explanation at the marriage agency. Really? Thank you. And so our visits to marriage agencies began, but right around that time, Monica's husband was transferred overseas. She moved overseas while worrying about me. I can't rely on others anymore. I have to carve out my own life. With that in mind, I joined a marriage agency and within three months, I met my husband and got married. But it seems my judgment was still lacking. Initially, we had promised not to live with our in-laws, but now we are living together. It started when my father-in-law fell ill, and at first, they wanted me to help with his daily needs. But somehow, I was persuaded, and we ended up living together. I appealed to my husband multiple times, but he simply brushed it off, saying, I'm the eldest son, and didn't make any effort to change the situation. Moreover, I suspect my father-in-law's illness wasn't genuine. As soon as we started living together, his health miraculously improved. And even though I have a job, the household chores at my in-law's place are assigned to me as if I were a full-time housewife. Furthermore, my mother-in-law doesn't approve of the way I handle things and always nitpicks, making me do things over. This kind of life has been going on for about four months. I was exhausted, both physically and mentally. I consulted my parents about this, but they had traditional views and told me to serve my in-laws since I'm their daughter-in-law. The root cause of all this was my lack of judgment, and it was all because I rushed into marriage. I'm well aware of all that, but I had reached my limit, although it had only been a short time since we got married. Thoughts of divorce were already crossing my mind. In this life, there are my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and husband. But I feel lonely. I got married out of fear of loneliness, but being alone might be better than this. In the midst of all this, another unfortunate event struck me. My parents were involved in a car accident and passed away. With their deaths, I truly became an orphan. However, it seemed to embolden my mother-in-law and husband. They must have thought that I had no place to escape anymore. I was subjected to even more demanding labor than before. In truth, I want a divorce. But if I get divorced, I'll truly be all alone. I think this was the most cornered I have ever felt in my life. However, my family didn't attend my parents' funeral. Originally, there were no relatives to attend my parents' funeral except for me, the heir. It was a deeply lonely farewell, 
But there was one person who attended the funeral. Just one person. It was Monica, who immediately boarded a plane after hearing the news. When she saw me, her eyes were red, and without a word she embraced me tightly. At that moment, everything I had been holding back overflowed, and I cried out loudly. She stayed silent, and stayed by my side until the end. Monica, thank you so much today. Yeah, I have to go back. What? I'm not letting you go. I already booked a hotel, so come with me. I followed her to the hotel as she told me to. Just so you know, Kate, you're not alone. If anything happens, I'll definitely help you. Speak your mind freely. Those words gave me courage. I want a divorce. I understand. Well, let's plan it out. If you're going to have a discussion, I'll be there too. Thank you, but I probably don't need to have a discussion. Why not? The divorce papers, I brought them with me. But you still need to get them signed by the other party, right? I already have his signature and his documents. Huh? So far, every time something happened to me, they threatened me with a divorce. I was afraid of being alone, so I couldn't take any concrete action, but they used that as an opportunity to repeatedly show me the pre-filled divorce papers. When I reached my limit and decided to confront them for not attending my parents' funeral, I brought out those divorce papers. You did it! Alright! Let's submit it right away. Do you have everything prepared? Of course. Alright, let's go together. Monica's offer was truly appreciated, but this was something I needed to handle on my own. When I told her that, she said, I understand, I'll wait here, and stayed behind. I submitted the divorce papers at the city office and headed straight to the place where those three were. When I arrived, they were gathered in the living room. Without saying a word to them, I went upstairs, grabbed my bag, and descended the stairs once again. I tried to leave, but my ex-husband stopped me. Hey, you came back and didn't even say hello. Well, you never greet me either, do you? Forget about that. Transfer all the money to my account, right now. What are you talking about? It's obviously your parents' inheritance. It's one million dollars, right? You're well informed. You talked to your parents about it before, didn't you? You have interesting hobbies. Eavesdropping, I mean. Just transfer the full amount to my account right now. Why? I mean, it's obvious that the money for your wedding comes from our family, right? Don't you understand that? You don't have any family other than us now that your parents are gone. From now on, you need to be obedient. That way, your livelihood will be guaranteed. While we're at it, you should quit your job too. I won't tolerate any back talk from you as a daughter-in-law. I... I was out of my mind. I couldn't make rational judgments. I wanted to get married because I was scared of being alone. But rushing into it was never a good idea, right? What's with you? Going on about yourself? Well, maybe you're right. I realized it. Even if I live with the four of you, I still feel lonely. So, I choose the loneliness of being alone. Or rather, I have chosen it. Huh? You all have repeatedly presented me with divorce papers as a way to threaten me. Therefore, I am not your wife. I am single. Huh? You! What have you done? Didn't you both always say it? If you don't like the way I am, we can get a divorce. So, I brought the divorce papers. I don't like anything you do. Of course, the right to inherit the estate belongs to me alone. Since I am no longer your daughter-in-law, I have no obligation whatsoever to give it to you. Well, I've taken care of you enough. Goodbye. I dashed towards the entrance with all my might. However, just as I was about to escape, my ex-husband tackled me and I fell down. My ex-husband grabbed me by the chest, pinning me down. You damn piece of shit! Don't get cocky. Cancel the divorce right now. No, I won't. I absolutely won't. I'm scared. I don't know what he'll do to me anymore. My ex-husband's grip on my chest was incredibly strong. 
I desperately tried to shake him off, but his mother held down my hand. This child won't understand until she experiences pain for someone so incompetent. They need the whip of love, don't they? While his mother held my hand, my enraged ex-husband grabbed my throat with both hands and began to strangle me. As my consciousness began to fade, I thought that it was the right decision to come alone. This was the kind of family that would do such things. If Monica had come with me, she would have been safe too, right? Seriously, it was the right decision to come alone. Just when I thought it was over, the front door swung open forcefully. Everyone in the neighborhood, the eldest son of this household, is now pinning down a defenseless woman. He is choking her, and the mother is complicit in her foolish son's domestic violence, starting with mistreating the vulnerable women. I was startled the moment Monica's loud voice resounded. My ex-husband released his grip on my neck. Coughing, I looked at Monica and noticed that she had a megaphone, seemingly acquired from somewhere, and she held it to her mouth, raising her voice loudly. And in her other hand, she held a smartphone. Monica's voice reached the neighboring houses, and one by one, the residents peeked out from their homes. My ex-husband remained stunned, still pinning me. Then, Monica swiftly approached my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law, wearing shoes indoors. With lightning speed, she kicked my ex-husband's face forcefully, sending him flying. How long are you going to keep up with this act? You damn domestic violence scumbag! Hey, you old hag, you're just as guilty too! Monica delivered a powerful blow to my ex-mother-in-law. Hey, you statute over there, what the hell are you doing? Your stupid wife and your stupid son are doing a hell of a job. I'll put an end to it, you pathetic old fool. I'll make sure you pay proper compensation. We'll take you down. This is violence. Oh, really? Fine. Let's battle it out in court then. Regardless of how the justice system decides, I haven't done anything wrong. I'll decide for myself what's right or wrong. It's all up to me, you imbecile. I have solid evidence of your violence on my smartphone. So let's see how the justice system judges. Oh! But before that, if Katie files a complaint, it'll be a slam dunk. Ah, that would be delightful. What will you do, Kate? Fine, fine. I'll pay the compensation properly. Is that good enough for you? I'll even agree to the divorce. So please, don't file a complaint. Then, it's $60,000. You! You have nothing to do with this. Just stay quiet. Kate's marriage period is one year, monthly $5,000 for enduring it, so that's $60,000. Hold on, you, are you even listening to me? Huh? Who's not listening, you mean yourself? You're not even human, it's ridiculous. Those who harm those in weaker positions than themselves shouldn't call themselves human. Well then, let's submit the complaint and the videos from this smartphone to the police. Fine, I get it. I'll pay, so please stop. I'll make the payment properly. Give me the cash right now. I can't come up with that much money immediately. The dress is in the old man's safe, isn't it? Ugh, are you still trying to escape at this point? Everyone in the neighborhood, this domestic violence scumbag. All right, I'll get it. Reluctantly, my ex-husband handed over the cash to me. And then... Monica and I left the house. I'm sorry, I was told to wait, but I couldn't wait. Don't apologize. If you, Monica, hadn't come, I would have been confined in that house. Are you going to file a complaint? No, I got the $60,000. Let's settle it like this. I see. Well, it worked out well with the bluff, didn't it? Huh? Actually, I couldn't record the video. When we arrived at the house, I heard a loud noise. I was too preoccupied with that. Oh, really? Hey, where did you get that megaphone? Ah, uh, it's from the dollar store. I thought I'd shout with it. Thank you. Really? Hey, how about you take some time off and come over here? Hmm, should I come and visit? Let's go out and have some fun like old times. 
And so I took two weeks of paid leave, completed the necessary procedures for my parents' affairs, and headed to Monica's new place. By that time, there was a huge commotion at the ex-in-law's house. The neighbors reported the incident, and seven police officers rushed to the scene. It turned into quite a stir. And there was also the boss of my ex-husband, whose house was next to the ex-in-laws. Naturally, the boss also heard about the domestic violence incident and the divorce. I heard that my ex-husband was transferred at work to a rural area. Unable to withstand the cold and indifferent atmosphere of the neighbors, my ex-in-laws became reclusive, rarely leaving their house. When my ex-husband called and said he wanted to start over, he rambled on about things I didn't even ask, without me saying a word. I hung up the phone without saying anything, even though there was an atmosphere of, oh poor me, coming from him. It's been five years since then, and I don't know what happened to my ex-family. Although I went through a scary experience, my current environment is very fulfilling. It's because I have already remarried. During those two weeks of paid leave, I was introduced to a man by Monica, and we got married three years ago. Currently, we are living overseas, and now three months have passed since I became pregnant, albeit a little late. I am incredibly happy that I finally met a wonderful man. Monica's husband's overseas assignment has ended, and they are now living in America, but we stay in frequent contact. It seems that I didn't have a good eye for men, but I certainly had a good eye for friends. From now on, I plan to cherish my family and friends and continue walking through life. It's wonderful that you were able to meet your beloved person. If the ending is good, does that mean everything is good? Well, who knows? From now on, may you spend your days in happiness. Thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next video.